Hello, I'm Zeb Khan and um, in the previous video, we did this uh, dashboard and we added uh, a drag and drop position system where we could change the positions of our widgets uh, just by drag and dropping at a specific position and it was really cool but we could go one step further and we could also add a widgets panel to it so we could also make it something like this and you can see now that we have a widgets panel and we can drag and drop all widgets to this widgets panel to remove it and add it again to add it you can add it to any place that you would want so if you want to add for example latest video here you can add it here and then you can if you remove it from here as well it's going to go back to the widgets panel so effectively we have created a, a drag and drop dashboard builder and you'll see that it's not that hard using angular cdk utilities by the end of this video we are going to build just this functionality if you're just interested in the code for this uh, this whole dashboard is available as a digital download from my shop and you can get it from the link in the description. Now, if you get it now at this price, you are going to get all future updates as well. So it's a good offer. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to add a widgets panel in which we can drag and drop things. So let's create a component for that and let's go to our code. And in our dashboard here, we are going to add with ngGC. Let's go in pages, dashboard. And inside of this, we're going to add widgets panel. Great, so we have our widgets panel. This widget panel we want to add to our dashboard header here. Okay. And let's go to our dashboard header and let's import this widget panel component. And instead of this add widget thingy, we are going to just name this widgets. And below this button, we are going to specify our widgets panel. All right. Okay. And let's style this uh, widgets panel now according to how we want it to be. Let's also split the screen so that we can actually see how the widget panel looks like. So currently you can see that the widget panel is tucked away right on this side here, but we want it to be floating. And just like you saw in the initial example, let's add a div here, a containing div. We're going to call this widgets list as a class. And then within that, we would have a sort of a header of the widgets panel. We're going to call this widgets panel header. And inside of this, we're going to have a mat icon. And this mat icon is going to have a drag indicator. Okay as a drag indicator and then after that we are going to just say widgets here okay mat icon is not imported so we are going to do mat icon here all right and then let's add some styles to it okay so i'm not going to go uh, much deep into the styles here i just want to make this quick so uh, we have some host si styles which actually um, make our widget panel appear good you know it has a border radius it has z index where it appears on top of everything and importantly its position is absolute so that it does not interfere with the layout of the channel dashboard and the widget and then we are going to position it such that it appears right below the widgets panel here okay so once we save this you're going to see that our widgets panel appears down here all right okay so let's move it a bit further down so let's make it 100 pixels here it looks a bit better and and you would notice that we for the background and for the color we are giving the system color variables material design color roles now, this I explained in my previous video and I'm going to put a link to that in the description if you are not aware of that. So, this is basically a CSS variable because this is dynamic, it's going to correspond well with our dark mode. So, then we have the widget box. Now, this widget box is basically the widget button that we are going to drag and drop. So, it has border radius and background and all of that stuff to style it uh, well. So, let's show these widgets here as well. We're going to do add for, we're going to add a for loop, a widget of and we do we have the store included here so we already have the data for this and we, let's just inject the store here inject and let's call this dashboard service okay and this store is going to contain our widgets that we want to show here so we're just going to directly use them here so store dot and we have already a signal here widgets to add all right so we have a signal called widgets to add and then we have a signal called widgets added so the uh, widgets that have been added to the dashboard are widgets added and the widgets that need to be added are going to go in this. So we are calling this widgets to add. All right. And we're going to track it by widget.id. All right. Great. All right. So within that, we are going to add our div here and we've already added the styles for it. So we are going to use the widget box style here. And in this widget box style, we are going to give just the widget label as it suggests by my copilot. Okay. Let's save this. Again, you can see that the widgets to add is already here. The latest video, it shows up fine here. Okay, and you can see the nice hover effect over here as well. Now, let's go back to our dashboard header component. And here we want to conditionally show and hide it based on this button click here. 
So we're going to do an if condition here. We want to have a signal here, which is going to be called widgets open. And let's make this signal false. We're going to do if widgets open, then we are going to shift this widgets panel here. Okay. And then here, then we are going to toggle between the two things. So widgets open, not set. We're going to do widgets open value toggle. Okay. And then for the mat icon, we're also going to add a sort of an indicator here just so that we can indicate more to the user about what state the UI is in. So if the widgets open is there, that means that we want to add a close icon here in the button. Otherwise, we want to add the, in the else case, we want to add the add circle here. All right. So now when you see, when you click on this, it changes to close and we can open and close our widgets. All right. So next we want to add the CDK drop list so that this list basically becomes a CDK drop list and it, things can be dropped into this. Okay. Widgets can be dropped into this. So how do we achieve that? Okay, let's go to our dashboard header here. And in the widgets panel, all we have to do is we're going to import here and then we're going to make this as a CDK drop, all right? Okay, now when you draw a drag and drop this, you know, it's not receiving the drag and drop and that is because this drop list is not connected to these other drop lists. So how do we connect it? Now, if you go back to our dashboard component here, you're going to see that we have a CDK drop list group which is surrounding all of the drop lists which are connected to each other. Since our drop list, new drop list is in the dashboard header, we want to create a div on top of it and we want to shift all of this inside of our div here and we want to actually shift this drop list group to here so that any drop list within that, this includes a dashboard header, this is going to be connected to each other as well. So let's drag and drop and try this. Now when we drag this, we're going to see that we have this nice indicator. So it is allowing it to be dropped into this widget. Okay. Okay. So it's allowing it to be dropped, but is it allowing this to be dropped? Let's see. Okay. You can't really drag this. So uh, what we need to do is we need to within the drop list in our widgets panel, we also want to make this div as CDK drag and we want to obviously import the CDK drag here as well. And while we are at it, we would also like to add placeholder, which is empty here. We did this before as well so that we don't have any drag placeholder to appear until and unless the user has already dropped this gibble instance into that drop list. Okay. So let's do CDK drag placeholder here, placeholder here. And let's also do CDK drag placeholder here, import it here. Okay. Okay. So let's try this out. And now when you drag it here, you're going to see that. Okay. So it's an empty placeholder. Okay. So now can you drag this? We need to test this out. So can you drag this? You can see that you can also drag this outside of this widgets panel, just like we would want to, when we want to place these widgets on the dashboard as well. Okay. So this works. So all of the UI related stuff works. Now what we need to do is we need to add the functionality for this because the Angular CDK uh, drag and drop does not actually change the data structure for you. You have to do it yourself. All right. So we need to handle two cases. One is the drop list about dropping the widget here inside of the widget panel. Let's go in dashboard header. And since we have the CDK drop list here, we'll need to add the CDK drop list dropped event here. And let's say that we're going to call this widget put back. All right. And we're going to give the event here. Now we also need to do one more thing. And that is we need to also specify a data for a draggable instance so that we know which of the widget is being transferred. So we're going to also add a CDK drag data here and we're going to just give the widget ID here, identify which widget this is. And then in the dashboard header, we can add a handler for widget put back. And this basically event is our drag drop event, CDK drag drop, and it is a number and any. So for each of the events for this CDK dropped event, we actually get two things. We get the previous container and the current container. You can see that for every widget, we have the CDK as a widget ID. So the previous container, which is this widget, this drop list, its data is going to be the, the widget ID that we need. So in the dashboard header, we can use this previous container, which is a previous drop list to get the data that we want. And we're just going to do this dot store. We already have the function because we have already implemented the delete function, remove widget, all right. And this remove widget. So we are going to do previous container data, which is going to give us the widget ID. All right, let's save this and test this out. Okay, let's, when we drag this here, you can see that it's removed from the dashboard list. All right, great. But when we do it back here, nothing happens. So we need to add handling for that. 
and we already have a CDK droplets dropped event here. But here the things are a bit different. In the dashboard that we created previously, we have each of the widget basically is a droplist itself with just one draggable item. But here we have this whole drop list and each of them is a draggable item within this. So there's a list of draggable items. Okay. So we need to distinguish between these two cases. So if, for example, we drag it on the dashboard here, this is a different case because a drop list is dropping into another drop list. All right. And if we drop it from here, this means that we are dropping it from the widgets panel here which is a different case, all right? So how do we differentiate between that? We can add an if condition here, okay? So this update widget position is going to be our default sort of thing if it is not um, it is not coming from the widgets panel. So this is going to remain as it is, but we're going to add a condition here. And for that, uh, we can also have an item object here, which has the data. So this is basically the draggable item which is being dropped inside of this. So if we have a draggable item being dropped instead of the drop list. That means that it is coming from the widgets panel. So we're going to just add a check to this data. So if there is a data, we're going to return this. And before returning this, we're going to do this dot store dot insert widget at position. Okay. And here there's going to be a source widget ID and then there's going to be a destination widget ID. So the source is the widget ID of the widget which is being dragged. And the destination is the widget before which we need to insert it. Okay. So the source is going to be the data. And where we are getting this is actually the container because we are dragging this into that container. All right. Okay. So we don't have this function. So we need to create this in our store. Let's copy this here and let's add this function to our dashboard service here. Update widget position. Okay. So insert widget at position. So what we need to uh, get this here is that. What is the widget that we need to add? So first we're going to do widget to add and we are going to do this dot widgets to add and we're going to find the widget that we want to find here. So we're going to do w, w dot id is equal to source widget id, fine. So if widgets to widget to add, it's not widgets, it will be widget. So if widget to add is false, we're just going to return this because we don't need this then. Then we'll have the index of the destination widget and this dot added widget. So this is widgets to add. We are going to find out the widget that we need to add from the widgets to be added list. And this is then the destination widget. So we need to find the index of where we want to insert that. So we're going to find that index here and we're going to do w, w ID destination widget ID. We're going to then do position to add. And if the index of destination widget is minus one, this means that it's not found. That means it wasn't in the original destination list. So this means that basically we are just adding this at the very end of the list. So if we go back to our dashboard component here, we are going to add a sort of an empty thing here, which is going to appear after everything. So we're going to do diff and this is going to be CDK drop list as well. Great. So this is going to ensure that we have a sort of a last thing so that we can insert widgets when the list is empty and we don't have any drop list to drop in it. Okay. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to do this dot add length. And then if it's not, then we have index of destination widget, which we got from above here. Okay. So this is the position that we need to add it. And then we do just the normal stuff that we do. So we're going to do new widgets, new widgets, and we're going to copy all of the added widgets, uh, make a immutable copy of this. And then we are just going to add it using the splice function, the position to add and the widget to add here that we got here. And then in the end, we are going to do this dot added widgets dot set new widgets. All right. Okay. So let's test this out and let's see whether this works. And if we go back to our widgets here and you try to drag watch time inside of this, you're going to see that watch time goes. This is fine. And then when it goes back to the views, you can see that we can place this at any location that we want. So if you, for example, want to put it here, it's going to adjust. And when it comes from here, it's going to do a different thing. It's going to just update the position. And when it comes from here, it's going to insert it at that specific position. All right. And you can go back. Okay. So last, let's just add a small trick and final touch is that we want to make this draggable so that we can move it around and we can see our dashboard more clearly when we want to, you know, rearrange things. So let's add this nice touch. And what we can do is we can go in our dashboard header and in this widgets panel, this is a drop list itself, but the interesting thing is we can also make this CDK drag as well. So we can make it draggable. 
and it's not going to in interfere with any other thing. So let's import CDK drag here as well. And now when we save this, you can see that we can drag this here and there nicely here. And you can see this, you can see we have the same functionality. All right. So nice and easy drag and drop dashboard builder in Angular using Angular material and the CDK drag and drop utilities. And you can see that there's a lot of possibilities to make this right. You can create all sorts of experiences and it also works in dark mode because we have used the system color variables option in our styling here. All right. So it wasn't that hard, was it? Okay. So if you like this video, press the like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel as yet, you can subscribe to the channel so that you can keep receiving videos like this. And, and we keep building cool stuff with Angular. And again, if you want the code for this, it is going to be available on my shop. The link to which is given in the description. If you get it right now, you are going to get this and all of the future updates. I plan to actually add a lot more to this, including multi-role login, including nested components, including tailwind support. So a lot of things are coming in the pipeline. And if you get it right now at this price, you are going to get all of the future updates as well. All right. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with some more interesting implementations using Angular and Angular Material.